Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Welcome to the last few hours before patch 3.24's major livestream announcement. That's when all of the main information comes out about the upcoming expansion. What I wanted to do in this video is recap all of the information from the first 11 days of teaser season, where there's been a number of little announcements that have been made, which do collectively add up to quite a lot. And in addition, there's a couple that came out after I put out my day 11 video. So I want to quickly go through those first, then after that, I'll do a recap of the major stuff that came out earlier in the teaser season. And then I'll finish with a list of things that we want to look for in the patch notes, which are things that may or may not be there, but that will have a big impact on patch 3.24. So let's start with this particular screenshot. Now, in Path of Exile Necropolis, Strongbox icons will appear on the minimap. So, this is just a little quality of life change, but hidden among this, there's a lot of other things. Firstly, this Forsaken Seal Strongbox has a text contains three additional anarchy scarabs. One, strongboxes can't roll anything related to scarabs unless they're operative strongboxes. And two, there's no such thing as an anarchy scarab in the 3.23 era of the game. Presumably, anarchy scarabs are going to relate to rogue exiles in some way. Maybe they'll cause m more rogue exiles to be on the map. Maybe they'll cause every rogue exile to have additional loot. Maybe they'll do something else. But given that Rogue Exiles were tied to the Anarchy League, that is likely what these are going to do in some form. Additionally, you'll notice this interesting Scarab-like artwork that does not match anything currently in the game. This is something people have been discussing online, and no one really has worked out what exactly it is. Finally though, you'll see a stack of 16 Divine Orbs. This is something that can't exist in the game in patch 3.23. In 3.23, Divine Orbs are hard capped at 10 in each individual stack. Now this is going to be one of those things that's not going to have any impact unless you're a top 1 or maybe top 2% player in Path of Exile. But for that section of the player base, this is going to be enormous. This is going to mean that large, large, large trades involving more than 600 Divine Orbs exchanging hands will be able to be done securely. In particular, this is going to mean a much higher level of protection against scams when trading a Mirror of Calandra down into Divine Orbs. Again, this is one of those things that's only going to benefit the wealthiest 1-2% to of the player base, but it is going to be something that will be a big improvement for that section of the player base. Additionally, you'll notice here a fairly unusual bow base. This is a bow that is in the game normally, but it's a very low level bow. I'm kind of curious why it would be in this player's inventory. It's the sort of thing you wouldn't normally pick up, but potentially we'll find out more on that when the livestream happens. Another question that's come up a lot is what on earth are these gloves that this player is using? Now these are gripped gloves, which is something that exists in the game at the moment, and they have both Eater of Worlds and Searing Exarch influence on them. Normally it would be an uncommon choice to wear grip gloves at endgame because they're one of the rarest of the bases, but a lot of their power lies in their unusual implicit, and that unusual implicit is in the 3.23 era of the game, destroyed when you apply Searing Exarch and or Eater of Worlds influence to the item. It will remain to be seen in tomorrow's patch notes whether that remains the case in patch 3.24 or not. Okay, so that's all the new stuff. Let's summarise all the things from earlier on. Day 1 was all about the Pantheon and the quality of life upgrades that are being made to the Pantheon, which is that once you upgrade the Pantheon on one character, that Pantheon upgrade will default to being on for all of your characters, but if that character prefers not to have it on, they can turn it off. The Day 2 announcement related to trade quality of life and provided new ways that you can shift control click at particular type of currency from your inventory to dump all of them from your inventory into a trade window at once. On day three of teaser season there was an upgrade announced to fusing quality of life. This is something that only benefits you when you're chasing a six link and you are willing to roll over a five link but you can control and left click and when you do that then it will apply fusings at a pretty fast rate. It seems like it's about seven and a half a second and it will keep doing that until your item is six linked or until you run out of fusing orbs. Additionally on day 3 there was a major interview that was done with Preach Gaming that's worth having a look at and I'll put a link to my summary of that down in the description below. Day 4 they teased Vile Split Arrow which was not something that was openly teased, it was like a covert hidden thing inside the teaser. And they also talked about some quality of life upgrades to Breach where walking over a Breach hand will be sufficient in order to unlock it. And also the precise mechanics of the way that Affliction is going to be removed from the game. The Day 5 one though was the most important one of the lot, and this was some major shakeup that's happening to the Betrayal system. Betrayal is being overhauled substantially. The most significant things that have been announced so far, and I kind of expect we'll get more on this when the livestream takes place in a few hours time. The most significant things announced so far though, Veiled Chaos Orbs are being deprecated, they're not going to exist anymore, and a new orb called the Veiled Orb 
is going to function the way that an Ashling Slam does at the moment. This is going to have major flow-on effects to crafting, particularly in the boot slot and the ring slot. And I'll put a link down in the description below to a video that I put out about crafting boots in the new meta. The Day 6 teasers involved Harvest and some quality of life upgrades that are being made to the crafting bench for Harvest. The Day 7 announcements discussed an overhaul that's taking place to what happens when you Vile maps. Basically, Viling maps is changing completely and not all of the details have been made public as yet. Day 8 was a nerf to stack decks, where stack decks are no longer going to be able to drop boss-specific unique items. Note that this only applies to unique items from bosses. Things like Mortal Fragments from the Divination card Sambodi's Vow and Uber Elder Fragments that come from the Divination card The Eldritch Decay, you can still get these. They're going to be able to be ripped out of stack decks, but it's going to be the unique items that are not going to be able to come from stack decks at all. Day 9 was the most controversial and widely disliked change that's been announced, and that was the changes that are going to be taking place to instant spell automation. It's no longer going to be possible to keybind an instant spell skill to your left click mouse and have that function as both move and also cast that instant speed skill whenever it's off cooldown as the way that you can in 3.23. In exchange for this nerf though, there will be a couple of new gems added, some of which look like they could be a little bit of fun in some weird situation. Day 10, Grand Yu Games announced an Uber Elder Fragment swap and also some changes to Maven Invites, which are going to mostly be a buff, but also are going to nerf a couple of corner case strategies, especially in Trade League. And on Day 11, they announced a nerf to Detonate Dead for Monsters. Anyway, that's a quick summary of everything that's come up. I'll put a link down in the description below to the most important videos out of these, which I think are the Day 5 video first and foremost. Secondly, the discussion of the potential new Boots Crafting meta. And thirdly, Day 9, which was the nerfs to Instant Spell Automation. All of that will be linked down below. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is 9 things you want to watch for in the patch notes. I'm working under the assumption we're probably going to get the patch notes at the time that the reveal takes place of the live stream. That's been what Grinding Gear Games have done in recent times. It's not guaranteed, they haven't promised it, but it has been what they've done for about 6 or 7 leagues in a row. But... These are the things I think you really want to keep an eye out on when those patch notes come out. Firstly, there is a question, probably listed as a bug fix, of do they nerf the crazy interaction that's clearly unintended between Rain of Arrows of Artillery and trap support that exists at the moment. Now this isn't trap support when monsters detonate those traps, it's when those traps time out, which tends to involve the unique belt Sunblast as well. I'll put a link down in the description below to some discussion of this over on the Path of Exile subreddit and the Path of Exile build subreddit. But basically, if this interaction is not nerfed, if it's not patched, because really it is a bug, it's not something that's an intended behaviour, but if it works the same way in 3.24 that it did in 3.23, then it is the premier boss killer of the league. The second thing you want to look for is just how much they decide to nerf Penance Brand of Dissipation by. This skill is definitely getting nerfed, and even if it's nerfed by 50% less damage than it's got at the moment, it is still going to be the best skill in the game. But if it's nerfed by 60%, it's still going to be an A-grade skill. If it's nerfed by 65%, it's still going to be pretty solid. If it's nerfed by 70% or more, it's probably not going to be used very much. This is going to have a huge impact on what skills are considered worth playing, because when a skill is more than 20 or 30% worse than the best skill, a lot of people will say it's not worth using. And if Penance Brand of Dissipation isn't nerfed by at least 55%, then pretty much everything else in the game is going to end up feeling not worth using as a direct result. Third thing you want to look for is the potential of any buffs to Ultimatum that might happen. Ultimatum is one of those mechanics that was a player favourite back in 3.14 and especially for the 10 leagues or so that it was out of the game, but then it came back to not very much fanfare in 3.23. Lots of people talked about it at league start, people tried it and generally weren't that impressed. I don't think it's quite as bad as a lot of people claim, but it's also something that doesn't have very many medium payoffs. You either hit big or you hit trash, and you hit trash probably a bit too often. What Ultimatum really needs, in my opinion, is a few more medium hits. Like, for instance, if you had an 8% chance every round beyond the third to get a big stack of like 15, 16, 17 Chaos Orbs, that'd be the sort of thing that would make Ultimatum feel a bit better. Sometimes you're going to get that massive reward. You're going to get that rare item that looks like rubbish, but if you apply a Mythic Orb to it, it has a chance of becoming a plus 2 slash plus 1 Cloak of Flame. And other times, you're going to end up walking away not that happy with the way that it went, but at least you've got a stack of 17 Chaos Orbs and maybe you've got a Gilded Scarab from one of the other awards. You don't feel like you completely wasted your time. 
Too often with Ultimatum, you spend two minutes clearing the event. It's really tense two minutes, it's actually a lot of fun, but you end up coming away with next to nothing from it. The fourth thing to look for in the patch notes is something I've quickly mentioned before, and that is the question of what exactly is going on with all of these gripped gloves and other similar bases that have got Eldritch Implicits on them. It may just be coincidence, but it may also be Grinding Gear Games sort of subtly hinting that they're buffing these bases to retain their special implicits through the use of Eldritch Implicits. If that happens, the ones to really watch are probably going to be the Two-Tone Boots, the Fugitive Boots, the Bone Helmet, and the Astral Plate. Those are the bases that I think have the most potential, although Gripped Gloves, Spike Gloves and the like will also become pretty solid again. Next thing to look for is the potential for Val Split Arrow. Is this being added to the game? And if so, is it any good? What are the numbers like on it? We'll have to find that out when the live stream happens, but it definitely was strongly hinted at in that Day 4 video. The next thing to look for is the potential for any nerfs that might be taking place to the charge stacking package that existed and was pretty dominant in gearing in patch 3.23. It's very common to see characters that use Malachi's loop as a shield, Void Battery as a weapon, and that use Badger the Brotherhood as their amulet, plus two plus one power charge rings, one on each finger, and then it all comes together with Relakesh's Impatience, the unique boots that were buffed first in 3.19 and then received a second significant buff in patch 3.23. The big question is, does this package remain as strong in 324 as it was in 323? If it is, then expect Relakesh's Impatience to be very expensive this league. If it is not as good, then it may still end up being worth using, and that's something we're going to have to pay attention to. The next question you want to look for, I haven't seen any of the characters that have been demonstrated in these various teaser videos Grinding Your Games have put out that have been using any sort of damage shifting setup. Lightning Coil, Cloak of Flame, Taste of Hate. Are these items being nerfed in patch 3.24? We don't know, and that's something to have a look for in the patch notes when they come out. Ultimately, I think the real problem there is that monsters have too much physical overwhelm, and that means that not having this physical damage shifting ends up being a bit of an unreliable defense, because having seven million armor is a fantastic defense against almost everything in the game until you come across that physical overwhelm rare, and then it just one-shots you because it hits you for physical damage, and although you've got 90% mitigation of Fizz, it then penetrates 30% of that, and so you take 40% of the base damage and you go splat. If you had physical shifting instead, then you might take a little bit more damage from everything else that's hitting you, but when that big terrifying monster comes along, it hits you and you survive it. So pay attention to whether there's any overhauls to monster physical overwhelm numbers and also to physical damage taken as X shifting. Finally, Two more things that I think you want to look for. The first one is the potential for nerfs to Molten Strike of the Zenith and or to Arc of Surging. And finally, buffs to currently underplayed skills. There is a lot of potential for a skill to become the next Seismic Trap. Seismic Trap was a complete and utter dumpster tier skill for a very, very long time. Everyone forgot that it existed. It was a laughing stock of the game. Then suddenly, Grinding Your Games overbuffed it. They buffed it so much that even after a couple of nerfs later, it was still one of the best skills in the game. We'll have to see whether that happens again, but any skill that's been buffed, even if it was completely terrible before, is worth assessing on its new merits, because sometimes one of those skills might end up being the next seismic trap. Anyways, that's all I've got for the moment. May Valorbs have interesting results, and I will see you for the live stream of the patch notes in a few hours' time.